Welcome back to the Volander. So we converted that conning tower at the top. We converted that into livable space. But there's so much more Volander to convert. We got so much more space to convert. Let's take a look. So just as a reminder, the Volander has a docking bay cut through the middle of it. It's actually below the conning tower. I don't know if you can see that real clearly. Um, the conning tower flight seat is directly above it. So it's straight downstairs from here. We can see that by opening this door. And then we just turn around. So it's directly downstairs. Well, most of our uh, stuff is going to be happening here. All of our ships are going to come in here, and all of our uh, resources are going to flow in here. Much, many of our construction projects are going to happen in here. Because of that, this is where we want to be able to get to and get out of really quickly. But getting from here to the conning tower is not easy. closed, but that's the cutting tower right up there. So that's a long-ass walk. What can we do to shorten that walk? Well, we can go ahead and cut a path straight from the cargo deck, or the, sorry, the um, landing bay. We can cut a path upstairs straight to our target. Let's turn on this here. So the point is, we want to be able to get from the cargo bay, from the landing deck, we want to be able to get from the landing deck all the way to here, without any complexity, without any confusion. And that means we have to do just about the exact opposite of the way it's set up right now. So if this is our primary path down, I wonder what's directly below us. Oh, would you look at that? medical bay that looks out over the cargo bay. Well, that's fortunate. That means that we can have a, co a corridor leading straight down here and entering into this area, and this area can be our living space. Now you might be wondering, well, this area doesn't look great as a living space. Don't worry. I can make it much bigger by drilling through some walls. So now we've cleared out some space for us. Where was that? This is the corridor straight up to command. Because it's a corridor straight up to command, you know what the ideal solution here is. So now we have a straight shot from the command deck all the way down to the cargo bay. And now these uh, corridors aren't perfect for elevators, but they do well enough. Um, ideally, we would like to have uh, something that doesn't get stuck, something you never get stuck on, but it does work okay as is, so I'm not too worried about it. On the other hand, how are we going to get from here out into that? Well, once you started something, you shouldn't quit. These robots were in love with heavy armor blocks, I'll tell you. Right, there we are. So let's put in the rest of our command. Uh, sorry, the rest of our little elevator. Alright, there we go. So now, this entrance runs straight up into the living area and continues on up. And there's a sticky part where we've got to try and figure out maybe we want to fix that. I think that we should fix that. Let's go ahead and fix that. Way to fix it, of course. Just make it continue to be facing the same direction as the rest. Now we won't get stuck on our way up. Although, of course, we still have to contend with the fact that there's that final bit, but still. 
that's pretty good. A straight shot. Straight down. Into the hangar bay. All we've got to do is make it so that this is airtight. Alright, so now this place is sealed in, and this needs to be a door. Alright, so now we've got a door, and this is going to be our entrance into the actual base. These doors are now relics. We'll have to decide what we want to do with them. So once we're in, we can easily go up to any floor we would like, but the question is, how are we going to keep these floors all separated? And the answer is the same. Doors! Great, this is the exact door we want, so let's continue to use this industrial door and put another one here, and I think we also actually do want to have one up here on the command deck. I don't think we want to be going through an emergency escape hatch all the time. Okay, so this is how we've set up our exit onto the bridge here. And you might think this looks awkward, but we actually need to convert a fair amount of the bridge into living space anyway. So what we'll do is we will make this back area turn into all the way back into the wall, and it'll be its own little uh, hidey hole that's pressurized on its own. Um, but I think black is probably the wrong color for that. I think a simple interior door will look fine here. There we are. Perfect. I think. So this is our little rear room, and we can put anything we want in here, but the idea is that this is where we would take a quick little nap if we needed to. <sighs> hmm. Yep, good. This place is sealed correctly. So what else can we put here? Well, we're a little bit stuck as to what we can put directly on top of a vent that won't block the air. Let's find out. Okay, so that's still gold, so that means the air isn't blocked. And what else can we fit in here? Let's take a look. some Pac-Man. Let's see whether or not this can fit into the corner. Oh yeah, yeah, it's plenty thin. Now obviously these games flirt with uh, acceptability in terms of fair use, but I think that nobody will complain that there are random logos. There's not like anything you're going to be missing out on here. There we go. So, this is the shape of our ship. Now we don't have any lights back here, but it's still really bright because of the way that the lighting is handled. Still, I'd like to have an interior light of our very own, so let's go ahead and put one in. So now you'll come in here, and the left side will be completely taken up. Now if that's a problem, eh, I can always change it later. But I've got to have the left side have some stability because of this. The best I could do is I could probably make it flat, 
by using up a whole bunch of catwalks. But I think that would look worse. It's dark in here, though. So how can we make it bright? Well, the answer to that is that we should go to the very top, and we should turn that into a light. We can also replace some of these walls with lights if we'd like, but none of our floors are more than one point thick. So really, our best solution is to change this into a spotlight. And you can sort of see how my thought process evolves as I go along. I don't plan everything out ahead of time. I don't believe that a spotlight is airtight, so we're going to have to change the way that this is structured. Because that's not airtight, we're going to have to change how we've built this. I'll probably end up making that completely vertical in the long run, but for now that'll work. So we have gotten ourselves a corridor, a second pressurized space, a little one, and a corridor that runs all the way from here up to the captain's chair. Uh, we could make it some kind of uh, gravity generator, you know, gravity thing, but we're not going to bother. Um, right now, we're going to think about this space a little bit. What can we do in here? This entire passageway is now obsolete. The other question is, how do we bring air in here? Well, the good news is, we can just go straight up. You hear that chunking and grinding sound? Well, that's because directly above us is the assembly deck. Right, right here, see? So the real question is, which of these medical bays do we want to get rid of, and which one do we want to keep? And the answer to that is that we want to keep the one that's easier to get air to, and that's that guy over there. So this guy gets ground down. Now we have plenty of place to make this living quarters. We still have a medical bay, but we need to connect this medical bay to air. Oh, hello. This will do. There we go. So we can now pressurize that area. Of course, now it is part of this airlock system, so we should close all of these doors. Now the question is whether or not that is airtight. Alright, so, that'll do. It's not going to depressurize, we're full of oxygen. But, uh, if that is going to be our exit, we're going to need to make it a little bit more graceful over here. So let's work on that. So what should we put back here, in this area directly behind the elevator? The ice machine? Let's take a look at what we've got. Obviously. Ah, oh, shutters. Now I think that I can modify the bathroom shutters so that they are closed. I installed it upside down. <laughs> I guess that's fine. Now 
But you know, I don't like the idea of a shutter that doesn't open, so what are we going to do about that? Should be obvious what we're going to do about that. There we are, a sensor. So this is right, obviously. Alright, so there we are. And we'll do... When we enter the sensor range... Open the shutter. When we leave the sensor range, close the shutter. <laughs> and now you're the wonders of the magic bathroom. I think that's probably enough for today. So just uh, in review, what we've done, we've connected the hangar, which is our primary entrance, with every other floor, which includes a living quarters, the heavy uh, assembly area, and the actual flight deck. In addition, we've put a bathroom into our living quarters and some uh, game machines into our flight deck. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this episode.